Hi, everybody. Uh, this is a uh, recap of the demonstration of Garmin's Basecamp that I did at the GPS talk I gave on June 24th at the Adult Community Center at Thorpe Park. Uh, just so that if you don't remember exactly what I did, you'll have a video record that you can go back to so you can retrace what I did. I have Garmin Basecamp running right now on my computer. And the first thing I want to point out to you that there is, in fact, a help file for this program. Just click on help and bring up a full file that will have more detailed instructions on how to use the program. So if you get lost in a particular step, or if you want to find out about additional features that I didn't talk about um, during the talk, this is the first place you should go. So I'm going to connect my um, Garmin GPS using a USB cable. It's already turned on. And on the left-hand side, you may have seen there's a little uh, green bar indicating that the data is being downloaded from the GPS to the computer. And if I click on the All Data button here, it shows a list of the uh, waypoints, these uh, icon symbols, and the tracks, which are indicated by little footprints here, that were downloaded from the GPS to temporary storage on my computer. If I want to save them perfectly, I have to put them into a list. And the way to do that is up at the top, you'll see there's a library setting and My Collection. If I right click on My Collection and choose Add New List to Library, I can create a new list. I'll call this GPS Talk. I'll get that properly capitalized. And now, go back here and I can choose to select individual waypoints or tracks on this temporary storage list. I can do control click and just choose a few of them. Or I can do control A and then select all of them, click on them and drag them over to the GPS talk list. Little green bar shows the progress. And then once they're all transferred, you get a little check mark that shows it's been done successfully. So now if I unplug my GPS, that data, the, the listing for the GPS disappears, but I now have one for my uh, GPS talk that has all the points and all the tracks that I had uh, downloaded from my GPS. And I can now go off and I can delete them, rename them, do whatever I want with them. So. We have a map display right here, and right now we're showing this particular area from near Flagstaff. There is a zoom control up here in the upper left-hand uh, corner that you can use to move up or move down to zoom closer or further away. You can also rotate the whole display to a different direction other than north being up, which I find very difficult to work with. So if you just click on the north button or the north um, indicator there on the little rotate button, um, you'll come back to a view with north being directly up. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit further now. Up here at the top are a number of um, icons for various ways you can control the screen. If I click on the little hand, that's a pan button. And now I can now, let's try that again. Click on the uh, pan button. And now the icon has changed to a hand, and if I click and drag on the map, I can move it back and forth. If I click on the little magnifying icon up here, that's the zoom button. And now, if I click and drag, I can select an area of the map, and the computer will automatically zoom to that level. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer to this one here. Um, there's a select button, which we'll, I'll show you in a second. There's also a measure button that allows you to do things like measure distance on the map. So if I just click here, I can draw a little track, right click the stop, and then if I move the icon to the track I've drawn in the lower left hand corner, you'll see that the track I've drawn is 20.2 miles long and covers an area of 49.8 square miles. Okay, um, let's zoom out again. Now, um, 
if I click on one of the waypoint icons or one of the tracks once, it will get highlighted on the map. If I double click on it, it the uh, view will zoom in to a fairly close view of that. If I now click on another um, waypoint once, it'll zoom out to a point where you can see both of the, um, the, the, the previously displayed waypoint and also the one that I've just clicked on. If I click on another one, it'll zoom out and show that one down here in the lower left hand corner. And of course if I double click on any one of these, let's try that again, double click, it will show a zoomed in view of that waypoint and then also any other waypoints or tracks that might be in that general area. To select a waypoint to get more information about it, I can go to the little arrow icon here, which means select, and click on any feature on the map. In this case, it comes up with um, a waypoint called Perlite Prosp, which I um, recorded uh, this past weekend. And down here in the lower taskbar, there's a name, there's a symbol, there's the position, and other data associated with it. I can change that name. Uh, so for example, if I want to change this from Perlite Prosp to Perlite Mine, just type in Perlite Mine, and you'll notice now on this, the screen, it has a new name. So the position here, which is right now in UTM, if I wanted to view that in latitude and longitude, I would go to the um, options section and change the um, position from UTM to um, latitude and longitude. Now you can see there's latitude and longitude. And you also notice as I move the cursor around in the lower left hand corner, there's a readout that shows you the latitude and longitude for that particular location. You can do something similar with tracks as well too. Let me go and double click on uh, this one called Kelly Auto. And down here at the bottom, there's a um, uh, there's the information window, and I can click and drag on the top of that to show more of it. And I can change this from Kelly Auto to just Kelly Canyon, rename it automatically. I can also change the color from red to any one of the supported colors, but from Garmin. In this case, I'll change it to a um, magenta color. Every point on that track is listed here as well, along with the, uh, the direction that I was traveling when I, um, when I made that point. Over here, there's a tab called Elevation Profile. If I click on that, it shows the uh, GPS measured elevation along every single point. And you may notice as I move my, uh, curs the cursor along here, there's a little man that runs along the track that shows you the position for that corresponding elevation. Now GPS elevations are not necessarily accurate. They're certainly not as accurate as the position measurements. So you can see, for example, here, there's some pretty substantial changes in, in elevation. Most likely I was walking in a canyon and some of the satellites that were being used for the GPS position got blocked and therefore the accuracy of that elevation um, is not as good as it probably should be. Um, if you're walking out in an open area where you can see all the satellites, it's going to be a little bit more accurate. Um, I can also save data in um, either a Garmin specific format or in a general format that other programs can use. So if I click, for example, on the Perlite mine here, shows up over there, go File and Export, I can choose either to export every single waypoint and track that's in the current folder that I'm working with, or the current list, or I can only export the ones that I have selected. In this case, I only have Perlite Mine selected. So if I choose Export Selection, it will only do that. And you have two formats that you can save it in. One of them is the GDB or Garmin GPS database format. And that's good if you're swapping back and forth between um, somebody that has a copy of Garmin Basecamp. But a better format, the one that I normally use, is the GPS exchange format, or GPX for short. And there's, um, that's a format that just about every single um, computer program 
that handles GPS formats can read, whereas um, they may not necessarily be able to read a um, Garmin database file.